This is our homework for Lesson 3, beginning on page 125 in your workbook. Okay, so for these problems in homework, we have to remember all the um, characteristics that we have learned for a right triangle, isosceles triangle, and equilateral triangle. So we're beginning with number one, and it tells us that these triangles that we're about to work with are right triangles. So it's very important that you read the directions to see uh, what you're working with. So since this is a right triangle, we know that these two angles that are not the right angle have to add up to 90 degrees. So it's asking you to find what is um, the sum of A and C. So, like we just said, we know from our rule, from our uh, rule with right triangles, that if this is a right angle, then these two have to add up to 90. But they want you to break it out here. You know how they do that sometimes. So we know that measure of angle B is 90, and the measure of these two is 180 minus the 90, which gives us 90. So same with number two. But this time they just cut out that one step. So they just go straight to, okay, we know E is 90 degrees because of this little block right here. So that means the sum of F and G, these added together, gives us 90 degrees. Okay, so moving on to number three, it says measure the angles of the triangle. Okay, so this is one where you'll need your protractor. If you have your protractor, these are the measurements that you should be getting. And they do, in fact, um, when if you add it all of them together, you get 180. But it's wanting you to see that this is 90, and then these two together equal 90. But if you don't have your protractor, it's okay. I don't have my protractor either. But if you do, then you can practice and see if you get that. Okay, so number four. Now, this is important. It says these triangles are not drawn to scale. What that means is that you can't just look at them and make assumptions about which sides or which angles are equal. Um, they want you to rely solely on what they give you and what you know about the different types of triangles. So that's important to remember. And it's asking you to shade the ones that are 90 degrees. So, this one is not 90 degrees because if we added these two angles together and then added and subtracted from 180, we wouldn't get 90 here. So, we know that's not 90. Um, this one we know is 90 degrees because it tells us, it gives us that little um, square right there to tell us that's a right triangle. Um, this one right here tells us that it's 90 degrees even though they don't use a square, they tell us that it's 90 degrees, so we know that's a right triangle. This one, if we take 65 and 25 and add it together, we get 90, and so therefore we know that it must be a right angle too, that this must be 90 degrees. So 90 plus 90 would give us the 180 total. And this one, um, if we added these together, we would get more than um, 90 degrees, and so we know that this would not be a right triangle. Okay, so now I'm on page 126. So again, it's telling us these triangles are not drawn to scale, so we have to rely on what they tell us here. We can't just eyeball it. So it is asking us to find the sum of A angles A and B. So the sum means what do we get when we add those together? So we know this is a right triangle, which means that these two other angles have to add together to be 90 degrees. All right, this time it's just asking us to find the measure of one angle, just angle C. So when we look at it, we say, what do we know? We're going to use what we know to figure out what we don't know. We know that this is a right angle, so it's 90 degrees. So that means these two added together have to be 90 degrees. So if I say 90 minus 57, that gives me 33. 
So that means this angle C is 33 degrees. And if you want to check yourself, add all three of these angles together and you'll see that you get 180 degrees. Okay, um, I'm going to skip 7 and 8 because I didn't ask you to do those. All right, so on 9 and 10, again, important to read the directions. It tells us that these two triangles are isosceles triangles. So we have to think about what does an isosceles triangle mean. It means that two sides are equal and the angles opposite those two sides are equal. So it's asking us which two sides are of equal length. So we know these little hash marks mean that those are equal. So x, y, and x, z are equal. Now, if you wrote those a different way, if you wrote y, x, and z, x, that's totally fine too. All right, then it's asking us which two angles have equal measures. All right, I don't really like the way that they've done this because really they should be um, not drawing. This implies that these three angles um, are all equal, which they may be, um, but that would mean this would have to be an equilateral triangle. But anyway, I, I, don't, I think that's a little bit misleading, but we're going to go with what we know about an isosceles triangle. And that is that the opposite angles are equal. So the angles that are opposite the equal sides. So that would be angle Y and angle Z. Okay, so same thing with number 10. It's asking us which two sides are equal. So again, we look at these little hash marks and that tells us that PR and QR are equal. Again, if you wrote those RP and RQ, that's okay. And then which two angles have equal measures? So we know that the angles opposite the equal sides have the equal measures. So that's angle P and angle Q. Okay, and then down here, just like we did before with the right triangles, is asking us to shade the ones that are um, isosceles. And it is telling us that they're not drawn to scale. So again, that means you can't eyeball it. You have to use your knowledge about isosceles triangles. So, um, I know that with an isosceles triangle, two of the angles are equal. And here, none of the angles are equal, so that's not isosceles. Same thing here, none of these angles are equal, so that's not isosceles. And same thing here, this is not isosceles. Ah, but if we look here, these two angles are equal, and I figured that out because they gave me this, and I added these together and subtracted it from 180 and got 64. So this is isosceles. And down here, they tell us that these two angles are equal, so this is isosceles. So I'm going to stop there and pick up with the second half of the homework in the next video.